Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Vio, and welcome to part two of my 2024 book reviews. First of all, don't mind the mess. If you're new to these videos, make sure to watch part one of the reviews I've given to the books I've read this year, as well as I have a playlist with all of them from 2022, I want to say, till present day. Also, I have a reading account if you want to follow that. It's the link down below on Instagram. I also have a Goodreads. Would love some friends on Goodreads, so you can add me on that as well. How the book reviews videos work is that every three to four books that I read, I sit down and I review them, I rate them, I give a little summary. I do this until the video gets to be about 24 to 27 minutes and then the next part begins my goal this year is to read 50 books last year i surpassed my original goal of 30 but then once i changed it to 50 i was two books shy of it so hopefully this year i can make it work this year one of my goals as well is to read more self-help business and psychology books so i'm also doing that at the same time as i read my regular books to start off part two i read fourth wing by Rebecca Yaris, and I have claimed her my favorite author of the year. This is the third book that I've read of hers, and in every single book, I have cried, and in every single book, I have not been able to put it down. She's just amazing. I was very, very skeptical to read Fourth Wing, just this whole series in general, because I read the first two books of Akatar last year, and they were good, but it just wasn't... Fantasy's not something that I'm, like, really into, you know? So I was kind of skeptical, but I was like, you know, it's my favorite author. My best friends have read it. I'm gonna give it a try. Holy wow. I rated this book a 10 out of 10. Just like I've rated all her other books that I've read this year. A 10 out of 10. I'm trying to see how to describe this book without giving any spoilers. As you can tell, there's dragons involved. The main character, the protagonist, her whole life, she is set to be a scribe. Her mom is one of the sergeants, I believe. And she tells her last minute, like, you're not gonna be a scribe, you're gonna be a dragon rider. And she was like, nah, -uh, girl, I ain't gonna do that. And she was like, yeah, no, you're gonna do it. So she's kind of forced into it. And the whole entire book, she has to learn to stay alive because she is very small and she's also very, very tiny in the sense of like height and weight. So all these like things that she has to go through are meant more for like stronger people so she has to train herself and basically this first year which is what they call like the newbies is a trial to see if you survive in my mind it's kind of like the hunger games where you can kill each other if you want you just can't kill the same people in your squad i mean you can but like frowned upon there's just like obstacle courses that like you have to go through and fights and training and then they also the dragons there's six different types of dragons and they have to navigate how to get chosen by them because if you look a dragon in the eye or move the wrong way they will not hesitate to blow you up and kill you like so crazy this is like very the whole entire series she gets chosen by a dragon and then she gets chosen by another dragon so now she has two dragons and it's the first time that this has ever happened there's also a bit of a love triangle going on with her best friend and her enemy so she has to navigate through that also there's a lot of death as well as something that you need to know for this book let's say i have my own dragon right i die like i fall off my dragon and i die my dragon's fine he'll be sad he'll get over it he'll choose a new writer but i'm gone now if we're in the battlefield and someone kills my dragon not only has my dragon r.i.p'd i am also going to r.i.p a dragon will, su will survive without a writer but a writer is dead without their dragon there's so much to it like so much and the ending mind blown mind it's so good cannot recommend the book enough the next book i read which is the 20th book that i read in 2024 is the woman and me by britney spears and i rated this book a seven and a half out of ten i feel like i need to back myself up really quick because i had said this in my book review stories on snapchat and one of my good friends slid up and he goes fio you rating someone's trauma dump a seven and a half is jail and i was like and I was like, Edwin, listen, let me live my life, okay? Because the book was good. Her story, I knew a lot 
of the things that had been happening since like childhood and like because one of my uncles is a big britney fan i grew up listening to her a lot i love her music i love her as a person so like i knew a lot of it but she really breaks down a lot of things that we didn't see behind the camera and she talks a lot about like the main moments that paparazzi like call her crazy and like what she was going through and all this i also i knew how bad that conservatorship was that her dad had her under. Brittany could not have a cup of coffee without her dad's permission. She says that for the years that she was under her his conservatorship, most of the things she ate was chicken and canned vegetables because that's all he would let her eat. They would be out and everyone including him would have like a glass of wine and he would not let her have a glass of wine a lot of things too if she would start defending herself he would send her to a rehab facility and drug her just a lot of mental and physical abuse which is insane also she had an abortion with justin timberlake which was just really eye-opening really disgusting in the way that it was done. The reason that I rated it a seven and a half out of 10 is because I feel like her writing, I know she's not an author, she's literally one of the greatest musicians of her time, um, but it just felt a little vague to me in some senses where I was like, like, where's the rest of it? Like, like I need more details. But Britney's also so witty and she talks a lot about God and how she kind of stopped believing in him or not even believing, but she kind of put a pause in her relationship with him and she actually actually found him again and the like the power of real prayer and a relationship with God and how it changed her and healed her and all the ways possible. The next book I read, you guessed it, was Iron Flame. And this one is a big one. I rated this book a nine and a half out of 10. The only reason I didn't rate this book a 10 was because there was so much going on at all times that there were moments where I had to like reread certain things because I got confused and my brain just needed a break. I was like, bro, is there ever gonna be peace in this? Like, let's be so for real. So that's the only reason, but it's just so good. So Iron Flame is the second book of Fourth Wing, if you didn't know what I guess it. How do I describe this book without giving everything away? Violet, our protagonist, she's a second year. She has both of her dragons. She's live loving life. She gets broken like every other, like every time she goes out to the battlefield or training, she like, rupture something, dislocates, it's just her personality. Um, or not her personality, it's just who she is as a human being. I, she needs to train harder, I don't know what to tell you. But the ending of the first book kind of led into the war that they were gonna be fighting in. And that's basically what Iron Flame is about. It's this like war that they're going through as well as still training as second years and everything else and trust issues and learning how to keep secrets to protect the people you love but by keeping these secrets not hurting them at the same time because they know that you're keeping secrets. I don't know if that makes sense. It made sense in my brain. There's also a lot of like love and drama and new characters and evil things and battles and wars and just wow and anything you'll do for love to like win and blah and all that fun stuff and the dragons and then on top of that like one dragon is growing but it's like the first time they've ever seen anything like this so they're like trying to like navigate that on top of like these like people that were supposed to be dead hurting into evil creatures humming to them to them it's just insane i also don't know how to describe what this this book without because i really can't give a big summary without really spoiling the first one and really just telling you everything in this i will tell you this though my mom and her friends were staying with me when i was finishing iron flame which was literally a couple days ago i was reading like the last 50 pages and i just kept gasping and screaming and i was like oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh and it ended and i was like no fucking way the ending of fourth wing was good iron flame bro i just it's something different literally i it my friend giselle cried when she read the ending i didn't cry i was more mad so rebecca yaris does not ever freaking miss the next book i read is one day by david nichols and oh my gosh i watched the series first and then I read the book. And when I watched the series, I watched it with Nina when we were in Boston. And on the train back, I literally had to take a nap because I could not stop sobbing. It was such an emotional story. So I was like, I need to read the book. And I didn't think my heart could be destroyed even more. And it was. And I rated 
this book a 10 out of 10. Also, shout out to the author because on my reading account, I like posted like the monthly wrap up and then also like the review for this. And he liked and commented on both posts. I felt so special. So this book takes place every single year from 1989, I want to say. Um, it takes place every July 15th. It's about these two best friends. They meet in college and obviously they have feelings for each other, but they never say anything. And then they both have different careers. So it's very realistic on like what friendships out of college are where you, like you have to make time to like see each other and to talk to each other. And they meet up around once a year. They either do like a trip together or they visit each other's hometowns, just things like that. It's just always there that they are so in love with each other, but neither of them will say something and then they both kind of move on and create different lives for each other but they're still great friends and this book is just filled with so many ups and downs and emotional roller coasters that like are insane and so so real the ending wow it was a plot twist that didn't really see coming i will say that the show is more sad with how dex deals with their story than how it's portrayed in the book and this is the first time that i have read something and watched it and there was like 98 percent accuracy to the book like when I was reading the book, I was picturing the the actors because the script was was taken from the book. The main lesson of this book is to tell people how you feel about them, about certain situations. Just talk out your feelings and never be too scared to do something because when the time comes, it might be too late. And if you don't do it, you're always gonna wonder what if. The next book I read is Rebecca Sorrells. I think that's how you say her last name. New book, it came out this year, expiration dates. I rated this book a nine out of 10. I was kind of hesitant to read this book because I read it in five years by her and I didn't love it. It was kind of let down but my best friend she was interning at Simon & Schuster and this is like a big release that they were having so we were like no we got to read the book at the same time so we did and it was I really want this to be a rom-com I think that it would be so good um, or even like a TV show like a limited series I think it would be so good and the whole gist of this story is that this woman every time she starts seeing someone or she meets a guy somewhere around her she will find a letter that that has the guy's name and then the timestamp. She kind of like is able to prepare herself for like what is happening and how long each relationship is gonna last. And then when the time comes, she kind of gets like closure from it and isn't really surprised. And all of a sudden she meets this guy, gets a note card and it's just his name, no timestamp know nothing. So she prepares to create this life with him, her soulmate, her everything. But the whole gist of the book is if he's her soulmate, why doesn't she feel anything like about him, you know, like she feels very safe with him and very comfortable, but she doesn't feel like he's it. Then there's a plot twist and then another plot twist. And you're just like, whoa. And I can't give away the plot twist because it just gives away the whole book. The gist of the story, me personally, I believe is that you make your own fate and you can either listen to like what other people are telling you is to become true or what you decide you want to become true. Also, if I got a note card for every single guy, I ever started seeing or got involved with with the timestamp, I don't think I would want to continue it. I'd be like, why am I going to waste my time? Like, unless it was like for over like seven, no, for even like a year. Why am I going to waste my time if I know it's not going to last? But also I have been with guys that like it literally lasted like six months and I'm like, yeah, no, like I wouldn't take that back. So I don't know. The next book I read is None of This Is True. And this is the first book I've ever read by Lisa Jewell. And oh my gosh, I rated this book a 10 out of 10. And this is my favorite thriller mystery book I have ever read. Pops is Highland Patient. This book is about two women that share a birthday. And they end up like meeting each other at this bar and they call each other birthday twins. And one of them is married to an alcoholic, but she has her own podcast. And then there's the, the other one is married to a guy who's 28 years older than her. And she's kind of like envious of her life because she seems to like have it all together. So she comes up to her and she's like, hey, like I would love to be on your podcast and kind of like talk about how I want to reinvent myself and all these different things. It's just so crazy because I don't even know how to like, like this woman, the podcast girl, she's married to an alcoholic has two beautiful kids crazy girl who i call crazy the jealous girl is married to a very much older man and has two twin daughters but one of her daughters 
she hasn't seen in like 10 years. Like she ran away from home, like no. And she, as she's telling her story, you start to like feel really bad for her. And so does the podcast woman because she's like, oh my gosh, like you have gone through like all these horrible things. Like you're married to a pedophile, like your daughters are insane. Like how do you even feel safe in your own home? And then as things start to unravel, you start to believe that the empathy that you're feeling towards her, should, you shouldn't be feeling it because she's actually a sociopath. Then towards the ending, your whole mind starts to shift. And I never thought that the podcast woman was the crazy one, but I was like, what if it's this other person in her life that's crazy? It was so like, I still don't know what the truth is. Like at the end, two events happen that you're like, oh, definitely her fault. But then like the last chapter you read it and you're like, wait, so was she the one that did it or was it this other person? Best thriller I've ever read. And I'm so excited for her new book that comes out this year. The 25th book that I read in 2024 is Only Love Can Hurt Like This. And I rated this book a 6 out of 10. I was so freaking excited for this book because I had heard so many great things. But I think that the audience is younger than mine. And I think that's a big lesson that I've learned this year is that even though I hear good things about a book, I need to like do some research about the targeted audience because it is great for like let's say someone that's like maybe like 15 or 16 but for me in my early 20s just wasn't it the book starts with this woman in london whose husband tells her that or not husband fiance tells her that he has found someone else and is in love with that person and that he thinks that they should break off their engagement then she goes to indiana just kind of to like get away from everything where her dad is um and that's originally where she's from as well and she meets this guy but the whole plot of the book i kid you not i felt like it was just like farm life and tornadoes like she got there she meets the guy she's there with her half sister with her stepmom and she just like so tornado so then they have to like go into the cellar and then like deal with that like it was just a lot of that and then towards the end of the book there was this huge plot twist that i was like oh my gosh and it only lasted like a hundred and something pages out of 300 and something and the plot twist had me so captivated but the author didn't really explore it in detail like it was it g she gave great explanation of what happened but she didn't really explore the feelings of the character characters like more in debt one of my i guess critiques is that i wish the plot twist would have happened earlier in the book because i felt like there was some just like great area that like th we didn't really need in the book and then focus it on that the next book i read is Claim Your Confidence, and I rated this book an 8 out of 10. My friend, actually, she interned at Simon & Schuster, and they have, like, this, like, floor where they can just, like, take books. And she was like, oh, do you want any? And I was like, oh, like, get me that. Like, I need something in between my regular reads, which is what this book was. This book was great. I wouldn't say that this is about confidence, though. I think that this book is more about your perspective on life. I think that the author, her name is Lydia, she talks a lot about how to change your outlook on certain situations and how we can't change the things that happen around us or how people act towards us, but we are in control of how we react to those outcomes and to what those people do to us. I, at the end of every chapter, it was silly though, because she was like, and that's how you claim your confidence. And I was like, oh, I forgot this book was about confidence. Um, this book was also written like during COVID times. I was very lucky in the way that COVID didn't affect me. Also because I was in sunny Florida when it was happening, like I was in my pool all day as well. Like it didn't affect me in the way that I know it affected other people. And in this book, she talks a lot about how to regain that like i get yeah i guess you could say confidence that regaining that confidence and that outlook of life of like be positive don't be pessimistic and don't let this horrible thing that happened to the world for a year and a half more than that let's be so for real completely set you back in the way that you live your life definitely definitely recommend this book the next book i read is the vacationers and it's one of those books that i like saw it and i read the back and i was like oh i want to read it but i rated this book a five out of ten and then after i read it i did read some reviews on goodreads and 
the most common review was that this book was really, 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 really boring. It was written in third person. And if you know me, I'm not a big fan of books written in third per uh, person, but like there are some that like really captivate me. But if you guys have read Happy Place by Emily Henry, that wasn't a book that I loved, but I know a lot of people do. This felt like the family version of Happy Place. This family goes to Mallorca for two weeks. They're from New York City and the mom's best friend, gay best friend comes with his partner. And then like, all these secrets start unrevealing, but the whole secret that everyone has is that they've all cheated on their significant other at one point in their life. One of the comments too that I saw is that this kind of glorified cheating and saying of like, you can cheat and not tell any, not tell your partner that you cheated or anyone, just keep it a secret and everything will be fine. And then like when it blows up in your face, just apologize. The main character, I guess you could say, I mean, they were, they were all kind of main characters, but I guess like the main, main girl, she was, graduating high school and she was a virgin and her whole like plot was she wanted to lose her virginity and so, so that was the only one that like didn't have anything to do with cheating towards the end of the book one of the characters is like i don't want a part of this family anymore like i'm leaving she leaves and then everything is great and they all forgot that they had all cheated on each other that they were on the point of divorce that they weren't speaking to each other that their whole trip was hell and everything was fine just because that one character left when she wasn't even someone that was cheating so it wasn't a great read there were some parts where like it did get me hooked and that's why it was a five but overall, I think the summary of the book hyped it up to be more than it was. The next book I read is In the Likely Event by Rebecca Yaris. And if I've said it a million times, I'm gonna say it again. She is my favorite author of this year. And I rated this book a nine and a half out of 10. I believe this is her latest release other than like Fourth Wing and Iron Flame. This is a dual point of view. It's a little bit similar to One Day, but not really. These two strangers meet on a plane and the girl is kind of terrified of flying. And within like the first 90 seconds of the plane taking off, it crashes. They're in the emergency exit. They have to like help people, but they also like have to save themselves and save each other. Basically for her to be able to get the treatment that she needs in the hospital, he has to lie and say that they're married because they couldn't approve it because of her medical charts and all this different stuff they bump into each other like two or three years later at a bar and then they kind of like exchange contacts and for about five years they meet up once a year this is the definition of right person wrong time because every single time they met up they knew that they wanted to be with each other but the timing was just always so off they stopped speaking because they have this huge fight and all of a sudden he's in afghanistan and she's there and she's not in the army and but he is assigned to her to keep her safe because she works in the political world and the reason that she's there is because her sister was in afghanistan doing some work but it became really dangerous and she needed to go find her and make sure that she wasn't dead basically the whole book is past and present as well just what they've like had gone through and what where they are right now and what they want to do and how to navigate it definitely recommend it i will never not recommend one of her books they're just so insanely good the next book i read is seven mile miracle by stephen furtick and i read this every single day for about five to ten minutes when i was doing my time with jesus I, I never know like how to like word that because like it's not a devotional like i'm not you know but like i'm spending time with god i rated this book an eight out of ten and i think that this book is the perfect book for when your faith is kind of like down in the dumps because it is about Jesus's last words on the cross. My faith when I was reading this is, was not down in the dumps. If I would have read this a year ago, I probably would have been a 10 out of 10. Pastor Steven, if you guys don't know who he is, he talks a lot about how God doesn't see us how other people see us and that Jesus died for us. It's called the seven mile miracle because each mile, I guess you could say, is like a step for you to get closer to God and how to properly keep that relationship and to know that it's okay if your faith is not always at 100% and if you lose it. God understands that. Like he never expected a relationship with them to be you know 100 all the time i really needed that a year ago finally i'm good reading this i just remembered a lot of jesus's love for us especially because it really only focused on his last words on the cross and why he died for us and how he loves us on top of that something that i liked is that there was kind of like a reader's guide or questionnaire like at the end of each like mile i guess you could say where it 
allows you to reflect on things from the past and why these things are like holding you back and how like there's so many things that happens to us that we see as like setbacks but like jesus has a plan for everything and he doesn't hold your past against you like you would hold it against yourself or other people to end off part two of 2024 book reviews I read Identity. I don't even know how to pronounce the author's name. This book has been sitting in my bookshelf for like the past year and a half. Don't know when I got it, why I got it, how I got it. But I was like, you know what? It's been sitting there for a while. It's time to read it. I should have kept it on the bookshelf on read. I rated this book a one out of 10. Like no shade to the author. This has to be the worst book I have ever read in my whole entire life. And I am such like a person for corny love stories and all that fun stuff. And this, I got such bad secondhand embarrassment. The plot was all over the place. There was zero character development. Let me give, wait, let me give you the basis of the book, first of all. If the basis of the book doesn't tell you enough, then I don't know what will. This girl, her father passed away when she was like 12 or 13. And because him and her had such a strong connection to music together, she has not listened to one second of music in four years. First of all, that is so unrealistic. Like that's just, just no way that happens. All of a sudden she gets new neighbors. Little does she know, well, she doesn't know because she knows she doesn't listen to music that the three people that moved into her are the biggest band in the whole entire world. She doesn't know that it's an enemy to lovers trope, falls in love, blah, 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 blah. And then the whole thing is that she doesn't know his identity and he doesn't want her to know because he doesn't want her perspective on him to change. Randomly in the book, she has this like little puppy golden retriever. She comes home, where's the dog? Let's go look for the dog. Randomly, just like out of nowhere. She, I think she had gone in a fight with her mom before that. Goes to the woods, her dog was eaten alive by some other animal. Why, how, I, I, I don't know. Her mom, she describes her mom in the first couple chapters being her rock in the time that she's been warning her dad and how difficult it is and how her mom kept her together. By like chapter six, her mom was this awful human being to her and was like saying these like god awful things to her. And there was like no explanation why. It was just like randomly, like it, it's, it, I remember I was reading this on my lunch break at work and I started like actually dying laughing. Take it as you will. Don't cancel me for saying this. She finds out his identity through her, her best friend. She finds out his identity and she's like, bro, I need a break. Like I need to like really sit with this right now. What does he do? He attempts to kill himself. Th there was no description of him ever being like depressed or like having like suicidal thoughts. I was looking at the reviews and they were so awful. Someone commented on it saying, this has to be the worst book I have ever read. And I read one of those One Direction's kidnapped me stories. Then I researched the book a little bit more and I realized that it was a book written on Wattpad and then it got published. How? I don't know. This book just makes me so mad. If I was 12 or 13 and I was reading this on Wattpad in middle school and they changed the main person's name to Ross Lynch, out of eating that shit up. Sorry to end the book reviews on a bad note. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching part two of my 2024 book reviews and uh, see you next time. <laughs>